Luca Pacioli was a wandering Franciscan monk and mathematician. He was a contemporary of Columbus and a friend and collaborator of Leonardo da Vinci's. His seminal work, Summa di Arithmetica, was published in 1494. It came, contained a section, Details of Accounting and Recording, that described the system used in Venice. This was four decades after Gutenberg's invention of movable type. Printing centers all over Europe allowed Pacioli's Summa to be translated, printed, and the ideas soon spread across the continent. In a way, the printing press was the equivalent in his time of the internet today, kind of at the bleeding edge of technology. Professional accounting regulators would have us believe that accounting is complex. But, the fundamentals are elegantly simple. In this series of two presentations, we'll review these fundamentals in about 30 minutes. First, we'll look at the who, what, when, where, and why of accounting. In the second, we'll briefly explain the how. Afterward, you won't be a professional accountant or competent bookkeeper. But, you should have a better understanding of accounting fundamentals. According to Wikipedia, Ha Jun Chang is a South Korean institutional economist specializing in development economics. He has served as a consultant to the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, and the European Investment Bank, as well as to Oxfam and various United Nations agencies. He is a fellow at the Washington Center for Economic and Policy Research. In addition, Chang serves on the advisory board of Academics Stand Against Poverty. At SBA Canada, we have included two of his mass market ebooks as required reading in our professional program. We prefer books that are well written, inexpensive, and available in both ebook and audiobook formats. Since our students mostly study remotely, we believe that it is better to give a choice of formats. In that way, they can read at their own pace or listen as though attending a lecture. Not only is our approach more flexible, our core books are usually better written and often cost as little as 10% of most college-level textbooks. According to Chang, economics is not alone in appearing to be more difficult to outsiders than it really is. In any profession that involves some technical competence, be it economics, plumbing, or medicine, jargons that facilitate communication within the profession make its communication with outsiders more difficult. A little more cynically, all technical professions have an incentive to make themselves look more complicated than they really are so that they can justify the high fees their members charge for their services. Your instructors for this course include ChatGPT, a new artificial intelligence tool. We also used a little actual intelligence provided by Wikipedia and Investopedia and internet search tools provided by both Microsoft and Google. The materials were assembled using Microsoft PowerPoint by Rob Farrow, a retired CPA and the executive director of SBA Canada. So, who uses accounting information? Owners and owner-managers of businesses need to know if they are making money. They need to know who owes them money, how much tax they have to pay, and which suppliers they owe money to. Tax authorities rely on businesses to pay their taxes to pay for government services. Modern states take on responsibilities for defense, policing, road building and maintenance, as well as the regulation of private sector businesses and non-profit organizations. Lenders, suppliers, and investors often require financial information. They need to know how reliable prospective borrowers, customers, or investee companies are. So, what is accounting information? Accounting information involves first the recording of financial exchanges or transactions, and second, the summarizing of this transaction data into financial statements that are understandable to users. When did accounting originate? The short answer is that accounting originated a long time ago. Most cultures had some form of record keeping to keep track of tax payments. So the when and the where depends on who you ask. In Europe, it dates back to at least the 13th century. We also have records of accounting systems earlier than that in Korea, India, and the Middle East. 
In the preceding slide we talked about the who, what, when, where, and why of accounting. Let's summarize what we found here. These days most small businesses develop rudimentary accounting systems to help with tax compliance. As they grow, invoicing customers and keeping track of receivables is generally what drives them to set up a formal accounting system. So, what is meant by the entity concept in accounting? According to our research on ChatGPT, the entity concept, also known as the entity assumption or entity principle, is a fundamental concept in accounting. It refers to the idea that a business or organization is treated as a separate and distinct economic entity from its owners or other entities. According to the entity concept, the financial transactions and activities of a business should be recorded and reported separately from the personal transactions of its owners or any other businesses they may be involved in. This principle is based on the belief that the business entity has its own rights, obligations, and financial standing that should be clearly distinguished from the personal affairs of its owners. The entity concept helps ensure that the financial statements of a business provide relevant and reliable information about its performance and financial position. By treating the business as a separate entity, it becomes possible to assess its profitability, liquidity, and solvency independently of its owners. In practice, the entity concept requires businesses to maintain separate accounting records for their business transactions, separate bank accounts, and separate financial statements. Personal expenses or transactions of the owners should not be mixed with those of the business. This separation allows for a clearer understanding of the business's financial health and facilitates accountability and decision-making for both internal and external users of financial information. When working with a concept that has legal significance, it's often helpful to look it up in a standard dictionary. In this slide, we looked up the word entity in an online dictionary. Often in law, when a concept is not defined in legislation, we must look to the ordinary meaning of words to understand its meaning. Lawyers sometimes call this the plain meaning rule. In addition to the three basic types of business entity, that is, proprietorships, partnerships and corporations, there are also two other forms of business entity. They are, limited partnerships and joint ventures. These are less common and we will study these later, when we look at income tax and business law. For the purposes of this course, let's not confuse things. Introductory accounting courses generally look at business entities even though there are other types of entity that require accounting information. Can you think of what some of these other entities might be? A financial transaction is an agreement, or communication, between a buyer and seller to exchange goods, services, or assets for payment. Any transaction involves a change in the status of the finances of two or more businesses or individuals. A financial transaction involves one or more financial assets, most commonly money or another valuable item such as gold or silver. There are many types of financial transactions. The most common type, purchases, occur when a good, service or other commodity is sold to a consumer in exchange for money. Purchases are either made with cash payments, including physical currency, debit cards, or checks, or in exchange for a promise to repay later. To summarize, transactions involve exchanges expressed in terms of money between two or more separate persons or entities. Once recorded, they provide evidence of payment. When compiled, transaction data can be used to quantify debts or profits and indicate a business entity's financial health. Once again, we look up the term, in this case transaction, in a dictionary. The abacus, an ancient calculating device, has a long history and its exact origin is uncertain. However, it is believed to have originated in different regions independently. One of the earliest forms of the abacus, known as the Sumerian abacus, was used in ancient Mesopotamia, modern-day Iraq, around 2700 to 2300 BCE. This early version consisted of a flat surface with grooves or lines, and small stones or markers were placed in the grooves to represent numerical values. Another ancient form of the abacus, called the Chinese abacus or swanpan, is believed to have emerged in China around the 2nd century BCE. 
the Chinese abacus features a wooden frame with rods or wires, and beads that can be moved along the rods to perform calculations. Similar counting devices were also used in other ancient civilizations. For example, the Egyptians used a counting board known as the Egyptian abacus, which was a table divided into columns and filled with small pebbles or other objects. The Greeks and Romans had their own versions as well, known as the Greek abacus and Roman abacus, respectively. Overall, while it is challenging to pinpoint a specific location or culture as the sole origin of the abacus, it is clear that various forms of this calculating tool were independently developed and utilized by different ancient civilizations around the world. Jewish bankers in Cairo used a double-entry bookkeeping system which predated the known usage of such a form in Italy, and whose records remain from the 11th century AD. The Italian merchants likely learned the method from their interaction with ancient Indian merchants from the sea trade. Their double-entry system was founded on a system, called Jarmanama, which had debits and credits in reverse order. A double-entry accounting method was said to have been developed independently in Korea during the Goryeo dynasty between 918 and 1392, when Kisong was a center of trade and industry. Their four-element bookkeeping system was said to have originated in the 11th or 12th century. The earliest known accounting records that follow the modern double-entry system in Europe come from Amatino Minucci, a Florentine merchant at the end of the 13th century. Minucci was employed by the Farolfi firm and the firm's ledger of 1299 to 1300 evidences full double-entry bookkeeping. To summarize, modern accounting originated in medieval Europe. It involves the recording and compiling of transactions involving a particular entity and results in financial information. This financial information is used by managers of the entity, tax authorities, investors, lenders, and suppliers.